stock one was a very simple tool for advecting particles and in stock two we went not one but probably ten steps ahead by adding uh, fields, creation, manipulation, import and export tools. We also uh, merged genome which used to be a standalone uh, not standalone, but a separate plugin for um, deforming and selecting vertices and faces and basically doing uh, a geometry manipulation on objects in 3ds Max. We wrote it in to the stock package and also gave it the ability to sample those fields that I mentioned before. So uh, it integrates much better with uh, the whole package. And we basically tried to make uh, stoke to uh, be the glue between various subsystems of 3ds Max that couldn't talk to each other before. We added a space warp force uh, which can convert our fields into 3ds Max uh, compatible forces. So you can take, for example, a fluid simulation coming from external source, let, let it be real flow or Houdini or whatever, import it into 3ds Max, convert it to forces and use that fluid simulation, for example, to break, break down the wall or uh, rip uh, through a cloth or blow hair and so on. Those were systems that typically didn't talk to each other before. So Stoke 2 is kind of the glue between those systems, plus solving lots of problems that uh, weren't solvable before uh, its introduction. So can you go into like some of those problems that were not solvable before? Is that because they were physically based or what are some it's, it was mostly the ability to uh, store historic information in 3D space. For example, 3ds Max has always had procedural texture maps that can generate a value in every point in space. Or you could um, also uh, use the body file stack in many cases to do certain things with geometry. But there was no concept of fields except for external third-party plugins for fluid simulation. Uh, fields weren't really uh, there as a concept. We even flow our fields through the modifier stack of 3ds Max, can convert a mesh to a field and then a field to something else again and so on. So we try to integrate it really deeply. And that lets you do things, for example, uh, historical data about, uh, let's say an ob uh, a character is walking over a floor and you want to leave footsteps that stay there. There have been tools that were developed specifically for that purpose, but we can use our general tools to say, okay, in every point in space, we're going to check if the foot is there or not, and we can store that data, and then we can resample that data any way we like. We can turn it into particles, we can turn it into a texture, we can put the texture into a displacement modifier in V-Ray and get render time displacement, and the footsteps could stay there or slowly release by just reducing the value over time and we cache all the data in OpenVDB format on disk, so once it's simulated, you can scrub the time slider really fast and everything runs uh, very, very uh, quickly. So um, you can create wet maps, for example, if you have a fluid simulation imported into 3ds Max and you want your material to change its properties when the fluid touches a wall, you can just create a voxel grid around, check when the fluid is passing by, remember that information, convert again to a texture map, pass to the material system, and voila, it works. And many other things. You can take temperature information from a burning fire and pass it through the genome modifier to melt an object as it heats up and so on. Many things uh, could have been possible if it were specifically designed that way. That means anybody could write a 3D, uh, 3ds Max plugin that solves those specific problems, but we are providing a tool set that doesn't solve a specific problem. It gives you all the modular elements, uh, node-based uh, um, modifiers and simulators, and all these components that can be plugged together in order to solve any problem that you might get that you don't even know that you have. So it's a much more flexible way to work.